Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Three Dad Bods with Brent, Carl, and Sean. How y'all doing? Good. Pretty, pretty decent. Yeah, good Sunday morning. Yeah. Good to see you guys. You guys looking smooth out there. Um, Carl's looking so, kind of, oh, Carl's cool. looking a little hairy. He needs to shave so he can be smooth. I'm looking a little hairy. I need to shave. It's like a Q-tip. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, like do you guys just gotta have more hair on top? You guys ever like? <laughs> hey, it's. <laughs> I mean, you guys could do my cancer check every every week just to make sure my head doesn't have any melanomas on it. So I don't see anything. We are there, dad bots. No melanomas. Okay, all right. So, guys, um, this morning, or not this morning, but. Earlier this week, my wife, we're talking about her work, and she, she says, was making you a sandwich. Just some. She was. She was making me a sandwich. Don't in the kill kitchen. me, Tracy. Don't and kill me. I, I do let her out. You got her, her. <laughs> you got her trained right. Good job, Brent. But she has said that AT and T is going to begin using AI in the way that they yeah. work in their call centers. And I was like, "What? What do you mean? Like, how are they going to do that?" And what they're going to do is have AI give the attendant basically the script to use based off the conversation that they are getting from the other person. Now, as as we've talked about in the past, this is on the fly. The AI, the, the system is listening to what the caller is saying. It's then immediately giving something on this agent's screen how to reply back, what their direction is, because they've they've geared the AI towards what they want to achieve while still listening to the customer. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, when I hear this, I say, yeah, that's what's happening right now. But if you ask me what's eventually going to happen is you're not going to talk to anybody at all with AT&T. You're going to talk to an AI agent who's going to mm -hmm. help you with the whole entire thing, which will push people out so, so instead of uh um, instead of absolutely working, uh at at&t tracy will be making you a sandwich pretty much well i mean why why but let's let's look at it the other way too from the customer's point of view i mean i used to work on the customer service side at vivant now i work in sales so it's a little different now but when i was on the customer service side you get people calling in all the time we we would have a foreign call center and they couldn't understand any of those guys and and a lot of yeah. times the customers' yeah. questions or issues are never resolved. In fact, even when they talk to people in the United States, half the time, half the time the questions go unanswered, or the tech or the agents in a hurry, or he really doesn't want to talk to the customer. I mean, I could see companies. I can see why they their customer service scores would go up quite a bit, especially with these intelligent AIs that are coming out. So, so why yeah, do they go I, I overseas? Think, why, why, why is your call sent overseas? Because it's cheaper. Yeah, cheaper. obviously. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's cheaper. And so will AI. And, and, and exactly, Sean. E exactly. A AI is going to drive the customer support from a human. Well, I mean, an, an AI can listen to you pick up the phone, Brent, and know exactly what language you're speaking in. And how to, and, you know, based on your first question or two, know exactly what topics to talk to you about, what kind of upgrades to, to offer you. And then, um, you know, then, then within seconds, set up an appointment if needed or push you to a different uh, level of help. Maybe you need to talk to someone that's a human at that point that's in troubleshooting. And, and and maybe they can help you. So I think it won't get rid of everybody, but it's going to severely reduce the number of people needed or if or increase your work productivity if you're in that position. Like I think that's what AT and T is trying to do with this, right? Is yeah. is improve the productivity of the current agent. The the average work time for a for a human is three to four hours in a day. That is actual, like when a person's mm -hmm. focused three to four hours in a day. AI is 24 7. It doesn't slow yeah. down. It doesn't need smoke breaks. It doesn't take a lunch break. It doesn't have family issues that they have to run off to and take care of. 
twenty four seven, live. Does it have insurance after you pay? Yeah. No. No, it does I must not. be AI because I freaking yeah. work a hell of a lot more than three to four hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have AI at Vivid now on the sales side to listen to each one of our calls, tell us exactly what we did wrong or didn't do well, which sometimes you have to kind of take with a grain of salt because the AI really, with sales, it's a little different than customer service, but uh, yeah, it's. I, I don't think it's going to replace sales agents, not soon at least. But I would everybody's not. everybody's going to be looking for jobs soon, guys. Yeah, I, well, I don't know how it would so replace here's, that. Here's the thing. So there's a there's an economist. His name is Walter Williams. Um, I he's considered to be one of the great economists of the 20th 21st centuries. He's a professor at George Washington University. He said something once that really kind of struck me um they were debating um human computer uh taking over human jobs things like uh kiosks at uh, fast food restaurants so you won't need to have a person a cashier and he said seen it at mcdonald's right yeah now. And, and they're all over the place and people were upset about it and he said well what what this is good it's not a bad thing it's a good thing and his point was, and he brought up this uh, specific example, what would have happened back in the uh, early days of uh, refrigeration if everybody who had a job delivering ice kept that job delivering ice despite the advances of technology? Instead of people fixing refrigerators, you'd still have people delivering ice by cart. Now, those jobs don't exist anymore because of technology advances and we're all better for it if we had put things into place to mm -hmm. restrict uh job growth and opportunities in other areas because of technological advances we would still have people delivering ice by cart so well i've played i've i've been i've been uh, experimenting a lot with chat gpt recently and trying to learn as much as i can because you know, I think it's the genie's yeah. out of the bottle. I um, I, I want to comment what, on, on what Sean was saying, though. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Back in those days when ice was being delivered, there was only about a billion and a half, two billion people on the earth. There's over eight billion people on the earth now. So that was one segment that was changed. Only one segment. AI is going to change a lot. It of will. Segments and affect a lot more greater base of people. And when you take away a customer service industry, I don't know what those people are going to move to. Now well, it's not going to just take customer service. It's going to take away accounting. A yeah, lot I, of that's uh, what I mean. I, it's a larger planning. segment that you're taking away from. So what we don't have enough. What what are they going to move into? Well, obviously, there's going to have to be government uh, intervention. They're, you they're mean talking government about, assistance? Oh boy! Yeah, that's a boy. That talk yeah. about a rabbit hole. But but Carl, they said the exact same <laughs> things when when they were uh, trying to avoid losing jobs delivering ice. And I'm, I know that that's I know that's no, an extreme well, no. example. The, the, but there are so uh, many. But they didn't have public assistance back then, though. That concept hadn't yeah, even existed you're, yet. You're not wrong. The, the, you're the, not the, wrong, but still, I it's yeah. I I think the principle is still there. There will be an evolution in in things that people do and get paid for. I don't think. Well, well, the problem, Sean. The problem, Sean, is there's so many victims in this world right now, yeah. especially here in the United States for some strange victims. reason that. Well, well, I don't, doesn't matter. You don't think they're going to, they're not going to no, just change I'm, all of a sudden when everybody loses their the, job. When you say there are victims, there are people who live their lives trying to be victimized. That's very true. Right. It's very true. Well, the, well, the problem is universal income is something they're already trying in Europe. I, I think the writing's been on the wall for a long time. I mean, we're learning about it now. Do you think Chat GPT is just a sudden invention that oh, came from nowhere? It's been around a long time. They've no, known for years that this is coming out. Time. That's why they've been pushing this. Well, that's why they've been pushing this agenda. What What do you think COVID was all about? 
isolation. Well, and then what if there's a great the upheaval in the economy? No one has jobs or work. Everybody's going to have to learn to survive on less, except those people who learn to thrive with AI. And that's that's the thing I'm starting to realize just in the last few weeks is understanding AI, being able to use creativity is going to be key if you're going to thrive. Now, if you're going to, I think we're all going to survive. I, I mean, could you imagine the revolution that would occur if all of a sudden millions of people were starving on the street? I don't think I mean, there would be a I revolution. Mean, I, I think there would be well, a small, but it would be cast out. It would be like, how could you go against what we're talking about? And you would be shamed and, and thrown well, out. And, I, and, you know, that that's what well, people I, want. That That's what the government wants is a. Well, if a bunch of people ran out of income in a short period of time and they couldn't feed themselves, but, I mean, the, the social program or net, net would have the to be The government will bring back uh, poor farms. Well, that and... And I think universal income. I think that's the solution. So right, wait a minute. Look wait, at it this wait, way. Wait, 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 wait. If the average worker, John, it's not going to be if the average farms, worker it's be private use farms. Well, if the average worker increases, according to this Chat GPT and some of these early studies, the average worker can improve their volume of work that they produce by ten to twenty times. You won't need as many people producing to create the. Uh, GPT or uh, uh, what is it called? The uh, gross national GMP. product GMP to produce at the same so, level. And so a lot of so that's what they're thinking that they're going to be able to people take care said of those people. The exact same thing about introducing computers to the workplace and things it's true. There is a lot more work happening nowadays with the computer advent of the pc that it sits at everybody's desk now a ton more happens that's a good point so so well, I, I agree sean but here's here's jobs. it's created more it jobs created here's there's the revolution pro- in the workforce which is exactly my point here's with delivering ice right you you, you just made well here's point. the thing though people people are going to have to be retrained yeah re-educated and learn how to use right. the new technology and soon do you know and the longer you delay the, the longer you delay the so farther you fall behind uh, i just want to point out something to you you are using some of the uh foundational arguments that uh the marxists use <laughs> yeah i'm on doing it on purpose it's not that i agree with it i'm just saying reality is smacking us in the face right now. The economy is, I mean, Brent's right. We have a ton of jobs that AI is going to replace because we've created that. The manufacturing base, gone. It's 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 it, in the third world now. What other jobs do we have here now, Sean? The so, a bunch so of the, call centers. The, we have manufacturing there's, jobs there's, here. There are. Yeah, it's, we do. We're starting to. They're starting to come back. Less. But like you're talking about, Carl, the robotics. It is less, but yeah. the people people that are in the manufacturing in the United States, instead of um, putting whatever together, refrigerators together, they're the ones that are creating the robots that are doing that. So their job went yeah, from and they're working their, on their it. job went from putting the door on a uh, or putting the coolant into the refrigerator to building the robot. So all I, Sean, I I don't I don't disagree with you. I am not a big fan of universal income because what it's going to do is create a Soviet bloc type experience for most of us. The problem is unless people engage in the new technology and really push themselves and and most people are comfortable where they're at, they like life the way it is. And now we have this huge change staring us right in the right in the face, and I and I to me most of the people I talk to don't have, aren't aware or have any idea what Chat GPT is. They've heard about it, but they haven't actually experimented with it. They've not even have asked it a question. They don't even know how to get on and get Chat GPT on their computer. Well, you're you're talking about Chat GPT, but there's there's more to AI than that. Oh, um, lot absolutely. More. Who who uses Google Maps? Who uses Google Maps? <laughs> Every single yeah, day I use it. That is a form of AI. 
That is telling me how to get to a location the quickest amount of time to avoid traffic. If a traffic condition comes up, it's going to reroute me. That That is AI right there in a nutshell. And I mm -hmm. use that every single day like most people yeah. do. Yeah, what happened? Well, there's going to be a lot of things that you can use that will make your life better that uh, AI will do for human beings. What happened to all beings. the map makers? question is, what are you going to do? What happened to all the map maker True. jobs? Yeah. True. Yeah. Well, what but, but here's my question. Else. What? They're, they're programming. Yeah, but the question is, what are you going to be doing? And I'm going to be fishing. <laughs> but what about our grandkids? What about our grandkids? Yeah, what are you know, kids going to be doing? I, I mean, our, gonna, our, I mean, I mean, it's easy to sit there and wave your magic. They're going to evolve. The grandkids yeah. are going to be. They're in going it. to evolve. That's what well, they're going to yeah, do. Well, yeah, it's easy to say we're going to evolve. Well, it's easy to say, Sean, we're going to evolve. But what does that mean? How? They're. And I'm not trying to be glum or 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 be an alarmist, but I'm trying to say there are some people already with some ideas on how how we can embrace AI. But right now, a lot of people are scared of AI. Are they scared of AI or are they scared of what we were kind of talking about? What's trying to happen to us in a control situation from Big Brother? Because that's what scares me. AI itself well, doesn't frighten me. It's what... It's abuse. Those elected you're, officials well, really you're want You're talking force. about yes. the abuse of uh, corrupt government officials, which you and I and Carl all agree is is incredibly uh, per pervasive. And it, it's if you're a government official, and nothing we can do corrupt, about it. Just, you know, I'm so. not just worried about that, though, Sean. I'm worried about greedy CEOs. So, I'm, I'm worried about people who want to get rid of all human labor because obviously they make more for their okay, stock well, and stockholders. Who are the stockholders? Do you have a 401k? Okay, so yeah, you're, but so Sean, you're you can't just. You've got to have a job to invest yeah. in a 401k, of course, don't of you? Of course you do. But you're still a stockholder. So this is only going to benefit the older we, people that have no, 401ks no. already. There's there's let an me, evolutionary let me process kind of, with all of it. But I, well, yeah, I hear, obviously. So when but... you're talking about that kind of stuff, what I hear is you're basically concerned that we're going to live in a in Battlestar Galactica, where the Cylons take over the world and chase chases across no. the universe trying to kill us. No. What I'm worried about is there are dishonest people and greedy people throughout this world that will try to take advantage at every turn other human How beings. How is that different and, than any other time uh, with the power? Well, with the power of AI, and we don't know the answer to these questions yet, Sean, we can say, oh, well, we'll figure out something. That doesn't necessarily mean we will. Uh, this is a This is something that's has the potential to be hundreds and thousands of times smarter than the smartest yeah, human being that's ever lived. So they're already I don't talking about that with what you're saying on that. There are concerns about that, but I also, what I hear is I hear the same mentality that people were using to justify slavery in the United States. And this is an extreme example. So just let me finish. It's a, <laughs> well, how does it go to slavery? Because, because <laughs> people didn't want the industrial, the industrial. I'm wondering where it was going the to The industrial from. revolution. People were saying that it was going to jack up all of that stuff. You don't need a cotton gin. All you need is a hundred slaves. What are you talking about? And there were people that did not want any of that stuff to happen. And the fact of the matter is, the the southern states of the of the southern United States were at a decided disadvantage in the evolution of their economy because they were stuck on using something that was not efficient modern. efficient or modern no i i look i'm not uh, i'm not disagreeing that down the line we can figure out something for some a lot of us to do what concerns me though is the change over that's going to occur because there haven't been any dampers or governors put on how fast we're pushing out this technology and there's a reason for that because some companies are going to stand to make 
a crap load of money if they get it out before everybody else. It's 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 just you know right. capitalism one hundred one like going disc. on right now. It's yeah, like the disc when it and came so, out. And so the ramifications that can occur to people's lives in the meantime, the, the, the carnage that's going to occur is what I'm concerned about. So I think one thing that I've done that's actually given me a little more hope, but you haven't let me get to that point yet, is that there are some things that the average person can do to stay ahead of this tsunami that's going to happen. But before and you that's get to what that, I'm concerned on, about. Before you get to that, sorry. Yeah. But I, I, but I, I want to address one thing. You you mentioned greedy corporate Damn owners. capitalists. Every, there are a few. Everybody, everybody is a greedy corporate owner. I'm sorry. And and, and mm. look, I, I used to get I into this argument. I don't. And, and let me show you. Because I used to get into this argument when manufacturing started to move to China. If you own a company that makes benches and you mm-hmm. sell your benches for $100, and it costs you $70 to make that here in the United States, but you have the opportunity to make that same bench, sell it for the same amount, and manufacture it for $35, what are you, mm-hmm. as a business owner, going to do? Well, if you're only concerned about the next six months, you do what you suggest. If you move your manufacturing base outside of the United States, and you have a COVID hit, then what happens? No, Carl. You get into business to make money. That's, yeah, that's why people get into business. And so, absolutely. And so, if I'm got, if I have the opportunity to make double in profit and sell it for the same amount, now, let me finish. What that does create, though, is believe it or not, more jobs here in the United States because even though I manufacture it in China, I'm selling it to. Uh, the furniture stores here in the United States. And in turn, those people in those furniture stores are the ones that are getting U.S. income from U.S. buyers inside their U.S. markets, having U.S. salespeople inside. It actually drives so the it, price down of that stuff, too, because you're, uh, you're, while you're making that bench in China for $35 now, um, your neighbor sees that you're making mm-hmm. quite a bit of money, and he's like, I'm going to start making benches, too. And now you now instead bucks. of you selling it for 90 bucks you're selling it for 70 dollars because your neighbor is undercutting you you've got you've got so yeah. i mean there's a lot of well yeah i i, I yeah the idea i understand of global market greed, you can drive down the price yeah want. i get that but the problem with this with chat with this whole ai is we're not talking five percent eight percent twenty percent we're talking a huge number of labor jobs that are going to be gone. Same, yeah. Same replaced thing by 18, robots. Eighteen sixty-five. Replaced by when, uh, people were moving away into uh, the yeah. But you, well, okay. What kind of miraculous jobs are going to be produced from thin air? I think you're going That's to see all more. I'm asking. You're going to see more service jobs. Okay. We, service we've jobs. Gone, yes. So, for example, how, like. How, like like AI right well, now is not going to take over well, AI the is, well, we just, that comes in. Okay. Hold on a second. You were, were you just talked about earlier that AI is going to eat up a lot of those service jobs. We're not going to need them because AI can jobs. do them. There's a difference between customer service and service. Service meaning I've got to come and fix your air conditioning unit. Okay. That's a service. Low job. info, low info service jobs, you're not going to need human beings for them. They're, you're just not. They already are talking about that. They're, most of those jobs are going to be so. Gone. What that's going to force so is people if, to be if, a if, little if, bit smarter and more educated, right? Yeah, it's going to force people. Why like I bad? said earlier, it's going to require people <laughs> to wake up and We're start pushing themselves bad? a little bit. People are not smarter. Bad? Okay, better educated. Well, I, great, I mean, uh, well, then, 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 Sean. Even though I don't like the idea, that's going to require people to. This is going to require social engineering and government interference. And that's obviously I'm not politically OK with that. But the reality is you can't have a million people starving okay, in big cities. I, 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 it's okay, politically I untenable. Saying, but do you, is, is it going to require government to have to do all that? Or do you think there are going to be some people who are innovative and creative and thoughtful and figure out ways to do to, to manipulate well, this? to create some service or some other thing. And then they're going to have to hire and thus make money for themselves. 20 people to help them. Yeah. Right. Yep. 
Right, but you're talking hypotheticals. We're talking Carl, about the reality right now within the next two or three years. It, it, it's, it's, is hypothetical. There isn't a replacement for those jobs yet. Not yet, but, the, but there also Wait, wasn't a uh, replacement but for maybe the job there is. The guy delivering ice. It evolved. And, and uh, Carl, there may be. Like, if you don't think that there's people in the background coming up with ideas on, all right, you know, get, there is. This is there this are. is purely Pollyanna at this point. It's hope. I mean, the reality is it's not here yet, and 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 we we don't have a lot of time because these changes are gonna they're gonna push them through. They're now you can right say now. yeah, yeah. I, you can say greed is great. Greed is you know Wall Street. What was that Gecko during the Wall Street movie? Carl. Greed is great. Yeah. Okay. Fine. But sometimes it can outpace what's so, good for so me, society. Can I? I just want to. I, I I don't believe in unfettered, no, uh, uncontrolled so, greed. Sorry, I'm, it's not I'm who not, I am. I don't think Brandon and I are advocating uncontrolled well, steamroll steamroll no, millions of people. We're not advocating for that. But let me let me tell you something. When you're so you're talking about requiring government intervention. All right. So there was a time um, SEC rules didn't force companies to publicly uh, reveal the salaries of high-level employees, CEOs, C-level type employees. They didn't used to have to do that. The SEC changed that and required uh, companies, publicly traded companies, to publish the salaries of their C-level people. Well, guess what happened? the CEOs started seeing what other CEOs were making. And instead of a CEO making a million dollars, he's making $50 million because mm -hmm. now he knows what his competition is making and he wants to make more than they are. So that completely screwed the little guy. Well, the government trying to make things fair made things a thousand times worse by creating the regulations. Mm -hmm. On and purpose. So, so on purpose every yeah on purpose so everything that you're saying carl when you say that you are gonna it's gonna require the intervention of government there are very few examples when intervention of government that has works. created positivity <laughs> instead of negativity yeah okay i'm i'm not just well, i can so think of one example me. that happened in the 40s when they started building all the dams the highway systems you're talking Doing about, that. You're, and that was a government job. You're talking about job. CCC. Talking about yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my grandpa well, participated and, in and, that. And where did that end well, up going now? Now that's all been privatized. That's all been moved from from government, from highway transportation to private entities who now get, get gigantic contracts. contracts. But it's well, I don't know, man. I just, I just know this that if we leave government completely out of it, which you know, I'm not a big advocate of government intervention, but you're going to have a lot of people, even in, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a depression type event that we'll have to work through. We're in a depression people, right now. We, we, no, not to the, not, not <laughs> the like the thirties, dude. Nothing like that. We don't have soup lines miles long. People aren't starving. Have, have you, have you, we may not have soup lines, but have you looked at large cities and the homeless people i mean there's just as many people without homes that are starving they're needing assistance like that as there was in the in the 20s if there's, not more you look at san francisco yeah, it's a mess you look at los yeah, angeles it's a I, mess new york city yeah. it's a mess yeah that's a that's a a lot of that's a, a lot, mental and, health and issue though it's, uh, no a lot we, of that is also people mental, who have these homes they can't afford a home well, a lot of it's a lack of mental health. I mean, there's a lot of homeless people that choose to 80, it's be like homeless, 85 actually. like 85% of people that are homeless are mentally ill. And then the 15% of uh, the homeless who are not mentally ill are in a transitionary state. It's not a permanent thing. So, yeah. and and you want to talk thing. about it's another a lot different thing than that it the was. government caused? The government caused the increase, vast increase in homelessness because of the regulations on mental health that they put into place back when when jimmy True. carter was president so oh my gosh don't even get me started that just that's just another example well i mean <laughs> 
it's it's going to be rough sledding is all I'm going to say. So, and the people who are prepared for it are going to fare the best. That's all I'm trying. That's all I wanted to say the entire time. You guys want to make this into a political debate, which is fine. I mean, ultimately, I'm not that far away from you guys. Politics, though. But, Unfortunately, un- well, it is. It's, un- it's, it's a little political. Yeah. This it, could discuss. It's just unfortunate. But you can't get what, away from what, what you know it. Is. Carl, Carl, what did that um, um, what did that guy from Google say? Oh, he's uh, he's basically saying what I'm saying. Things are going to be pretty tough. Now, the one hope he does throw out there, and I agree with him on this long term. But explain is, who he is and 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 well, where he, he, he was, was one of the how. lead. De- well, he was one of the lead designers for the Google AI, and he it wasn't one. He was lead- he, w- he was the primary well, driver. Well, well no, there's, there's more, more than, than one, one Brent. But- he was the primary he, guy, but there's he, quite a few that are involved. That's not what in he's it. saying. He's yeah. just saying that he's the one that was driving. Yeah, yeah. All right, but the the point is, he was fired or let go because he's claiming that the Google AI has some sort of. Uh, I thought sen- he stepped away. Sentience. What's that? I thought no, he, he stepped was fired. Away. Oh, was he? He oh. was asked to leave. Yeah, because he was claiming that the Google AI was alive and it scared the hell out of everybody, and so uh, they didn't want that information out. Uh, the problem too, is there's so much pressure on Google to release their AI because of open chat GPT and their company. So it's a big, it's like a space race right now who can get it out the fastest and at the highest level. So, and that's why Musk lately has been saying, Hey, slow down guys. We don't know what the long-term ramifications on this are. So let's, let's let's take it a little easier. But his point is basically that. Um, you know, because of the lack of regulation and the fact that we are pushing as fast as we are, there's going to be some major seismic changes in the economies and we're not ready for it. That's basically what he was saying. And he isn't talking about a, uh, Terminator type, uh, the machines take over the world, but he is concerned about the people who control these machines and basically the basic feeling is um, you can't control what someone in China is going to want to do with this or Russia for that matter, or a terrorist that uh, gets his hands on the technology. So it's something that we just don't understand yet the ramifications of what's going to happen because we I don't disagree it so with quickly. any of that. Uh, unfortunately it goes back. It, it, He's just and, urging and, caution. And he should and, yeah. and people should urge caution when it comes to things that we don't understand. But um, you also have to uh, make sure that you're not overregulating things. Is all I'm saying. Let me well, ask you guys his, a question. His... Let me ask you guys because mm-hmm. Sean, you brought up the the ice. Okay, but let me let me bring up another example. Um, Oppenheimer, and we know this movie's coming out with Oppenheimer. The man. Uh, the Manhattan Project and everything, but he himself was working to split the atom, and and his focus was splitting the atom, and and you know that was his focus. When it happened, when he was able to do it, he suddenly realized what happened, and realized if this gets into the wrong hands, the government's been pushing me to drive this. What could really happen? He he single-handedly could be responsible for the destruction of mankind. Now, do you think this guy from Google had those same exact thoughts in uncovering this, seeing if it gets into the wrong hands like you were talking about, could possibly Uh cause grave destruction? And I don't know if you guys have ever heard any accounts of the people in New Mexico who watched that first blast. Oh, yeah. But the... Accounts oh, are yeah. horrific. It's it's not yeah, a worried. it's not something that is like oh this is spectacular. No. It is the one account I saw was it was pitch black. It was nighttime darkness, and when it went off, it was brighter than any light that any of us had ever seen in our lives. And mm-hmm. we suddenly had the realization of what has been created. I I, and I yet think we still exist. Look. Look, I don't think this is not as many a in Japan. Terrible th- <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't believe AI having AI robots, whatever you want to call it, is a bad thing for mankind. But my fear, like this guy's, is 
you can't you can't beat bad out of people. I mean, people are people, and regardless of how we want them to be ethical and treat things with respect and look at the big picture, the problem is most of them are not. And uh, well, not most, but there are a few that will not. Um, some people call that sociopath because they have no uh, conscience. Uh, conscience and yeah exactly and that's that's concerning and 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 i i mean obviously i know i personally have always maintained that the less regulation and the less uh control government puts on technology or industries the better off we can be but with this kind of thing where it could snuff us out um i mean where someone could snuff us out. Let's not blame the technology. It's, it's again, it's the argument is the gun responsible or the person behind the gun that pulls the trigger. Obviously there are, it will put an immense of power in certain people's hands. And that is, scary. yeah, I don't disagree with anything that you're saying, but I will say, um, Isaac Newton, what was his, his, his rule of physics, right? Anything that any action creates a equal right. and opposite reaction, right? So for, for every bad guy that's doing mm-hmm. this, there's, I think, I believe there's a hundred good guys that are doing the exact opposite well, and there'll be. And this is, and, the, and that's what this guy's saying, basically, Sean, you, you hit it right on the head. He's saying, let's be good parents uh, to these AIs. Cause they, that's what he looks at yeah. them as, as children. They're in that phase, that, that early stage. They're learning 100%. from human beings. And if if we can be good parents and teach them good principles and ethics, then they will ignore the evil, hopefully, and and not be, you know, dismiss it. Basically, he's saying eventually they'll have the power to over. I mean, they'll be so intelligent, man. I mean, it's brutal. I mean, these stories, uh, I mean, it made me laugh when I really, it dawned on me how powerful these 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 programs will be uh we we you know in terminator they actually have a chance at shooting one of the machines you won't have that chance if if they are indoctrinated into military weaponry Uh, they'll have 50 million different uh variations of what you're going to do next and they'll already have covered them there's no chance in hell that you'll be able to stop an ai enough to cover that i mean well, they've already, they've already asked the AIs what what what's the only way to stop another AI uh, is by having an AI right. stop the AI. So, <laughs> in other words, human beings will have no shot. We'll see. It's scary, man. Or to travel back in time and stop <laughs> I, it from happening. Yeah. <laughs> Which, oh, there you go, Brett. What's that called? What's that show called? Uh, well, time there's Bandit. A lot or, of or, <laughs> A time bunch cop. Of shows like time that. cop. Data <laughs> Connor. Yeah. Which one of you guys are going to be John Connor? <laughs> <laughs> Which oh, one's geez. not me? John, uh, Carl, you're, you got to be Linda Hamilton. I ain't gonna, the machine's gonna step on me, man. I'm too slow. Squash. <laughs> <laughs> At least it won't eat me. Machines don't eat human flesh, so I should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, that's that was a little good of a good debate, guys. But let's talk a little bit. Let's be positive, though. What kind of things do you think? are going to be jobs or skills that will thrive with AI type machines. Sean, you're in the tech industry. I am. Um, t- I, so I, ahead, sorry, and, and I, I jumped off the cam here, but I did find, I was, I had this article here of mm-hmm. the, the advantage, the advantages of, of AI. Um, mm-hmm. One obvious one is the reduction of human error. Yeah um yeah zero risks we talked about before 24 7 avail- avail- availability digital assistance new inventions are going to be driven from ai itself now here's mm-hmm. one that i saw and and this one kind of frightens me and i'll jump back on here um unbiased decisions and this is where i become worried because the media already influences what we see 
on the internet. It influences what we see on the news. It influences what we see on social media. How it, we're absolutely crazy if we think that it's not going to also influence the way that AI the, is the derived. only the, the and, only yeah, thing that AI to can it. Uh, push out is what's programmed into it. So if, if a person who has some bias right. against one thing and not another programs that bias into it, which we all know happens, especially with the media, that's not. It can only be yeah, uh, wiki. you know it can only be yeah. as unbiased as uh, the person programming it. It's and, true, and, that, and, that, and that's, that's what people have problem. to understand. Just like the internet, everything you see on the internet is not true. <laughs> but <laughs> well, I think it, just like browsers, I think different AI companies, like Musk, is already talking about having his own AI company now because he already sees the writing on the wall from the first guy that came out with the Open Chat GPT company. That guy's San Francisco based progressive. I mean, it's very, there are already complaints that the chat GPT-4 is too progressive. And, you know, you have to trick it, in other words, to get it to uh, look at something more neutral. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I Brent, you're so right. That is a problem. Have, have you actually gone in? Problem. And, so I've, I've specifically gone in and I've put some things in to, to uh, ask mm-hmm. it co- some controversial questions in some different different scenarios okay and so far uh even though what you're saying is is true with all the uh, progressive uh, companies that are pretty much in control of a lot of this stuff right now it, it was uh what i put in there has been pretty fair i would say i'm not gonna i'm not gonna tell you some of the stuff mm-hmm. that i put in there because it's but yeah. Well, I'll give you an example. What well, one that I saw is it it'll enable it, it'll reduce tragic events. And and mm-hmm. when I say that, um look at Chernobyl and what happened with Chernobyl and and because it was through humans it took so long and the amount of disaster that happened. But if you have AI, if you've got robots, it senses an issue before it happens, reduces that issue from actually happening because it's it's AI, you know, it, it'll stop a Chernobyl from happening, causing a well, catastrophic think about event. Health. Think about health. So yeah, you, and you plug in all of the information regarding, let's say, cancer. I mean, there's already, mm-hmm. I sent you guys an article that was written, the Huntsman Cancer Institute using AI to, you know, go over some cancer stuff. And it it's kind of interesting that they've actually come up with a couple of things that people haven't thought about. Right. And, and it also came up with the correct well, the things... diagnoses of certain things with, so it's, yeah. Yeah. Things will be discovered. So let me ask There's you some this. limitations. Let, uh-huh. let me ask you with that. How is the medical industry going to, get involved with AI because we all know there's no way that they're going to allow profits to be taken. There's no way that they're going to allow AI to say, Hey, do this, 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 and you'll be cured because that is not their best interest on what they want. (laughs) Going back to conspiracy, but you're right. Maybe there is some truth to that. But here's the thing with the problem with the current, the problem (laughs) with AI currently is it can't access databases. There's still some limitations. I mean, it's not right now. It's it's predictive uh, in terms of conversation. That's the, why everybody's so wow. This is really cool. It can write a script for a podcast in three seconds. The reality, though, is it's it's all predictive based Data. on information right. that's been fed already. The problem is it can't go back into like the internet or a database that some. I Actually, mean, it, it over does, time it, it they already, they will no, be it to does that go level. Internet sources. It does go. Through it does go through some of that stuff now. <clears throat> well, it depends so, on which one you're talking about. But so but it adapts. And I just it had it. T- I just had it tell me this so, morning yeah, it doesn't well, do that. Sean. It's lying to you. <laughs> uh, it's it, it lied. Yeah, oh yeah, already, right. It lies so, to us too. There's an example. It's already <laughs> just like lying humans. to us. It's scary. So so what, one of our friends, Craig Barnes, yeah. he's um, what's considered a data scientist, right? Okay, so 
right. that means that Craig is an expert at going through vast amounts of information and picking stuff out to either prove or disprove a point or whatever. So the it's called big data. That's a, there's a term for it, big data, big data. You start feeding that big data into into this AI and you can do some great things, you can do some bad things, but specifically within um, the the healthcare industry, I think you're gonna see some really incredible advancements in medical technology and medical understanding that we haven't been mm-hmm. able to put together ourselves because we don't have the uh, the computative uh, capacity that that the AI has at its disposal, right? This, so. I think I did read somewhere that they did figure out one cure to a certain cancer just recently. Cause yeah, some some AI. some improved. So uh, I think it was a, a lung cancer that you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. Um, but but it, it wasn't a cure. But it was like yeah. there's a an advancement that they hadn't considered or whatever. That so I mean these are the good things that I'm talking about that I've been arguing for. Right. That would be fantastic. But I don't have faith that's going to happen. I mean, it'd be fantastic, but I just don't have faith that that is. I think it'll be allowed, Car uh, Brent. Mm -hmm. But there'll be, like you're talking about, there'll be some things done to the price. They'll get their money out of it, so one way or another. So yeah, they will. They'll get their pound of flesh. Yeah, I think. I think one thing. I think one thing with, like my son, he's going into microbiology. He's going to be a scientist. And I think AI is going to make his job much more productive. And they'll, and I think the level of technological breakthroughs that we have in the next 15 or 20 years are going to be incredible uh, because of the fact that we can accelerate our, our productivity and the ability for AI to help us understand the world and science better than we have any time before. It, it's kind of like, There's like Sean was talking about earlier, there's the industrial revolution. There's the informational information revolution. I don't know what they're going to call this one, but this is one of those breakthroughs. And uh, there's a lot of just in the initial stage, there is a lot of uh, unknowns and and possibly turbulence. And that's that's all I was trying to say earlier. And all I'm saying as far as what we can do is learn more about the technologies. The more knowledge you have about something that you're afraid of or scared of, the better that, you'll react the, to it. And that's, that's the message I wanted to communicate. Point, Carl. No, we're, we're not agreeing. an argument yeah. about if we're, we should agreeing. have government intervention we're, we're or not. On that. <laughs> you're pretty sensitive, Carl, aren't you? No, I'm just, I'm just, yeah, well, I really wasn't given Sorry, a chance Carl. to finish my thoughts Sorry, several I love times, you. but you know, point, I just want to, no, that's I'm, okay. What I'm trying to do is I'm no, trying no. to prevent your father from being disappointed in the fact that you're advocating for government, government. <laughs> <laughs> to your point, Carl, let, let me toss this softball out there. All right. 50 years from now, what's the possibility of, as we talked about CEOs, we talked about government officials that those no longer exist and that corporations are run from ai that our government is run from ai let me ask you that i think i think if there's mm, that would be possibility crazy for that to be quite honest you know have you ever heard this analogy that you know when modern man 20th century man visits these amazon tribes where They've never seen a man or modern man before. Yeah. It's almost like the little ant looking up at the giant elephant. So the idea was if aliens visit the earth, they'll look at us as ants. So this guy in that Google guy that we were talking about earlier, this is the exact analogy he uses several times that AI eventually <laughs> could look at humans the same way. Um, are we just someone that they manage like a puppy? Or you're will talking, they get bored with us and move back on? Talking about and, uh, Cylons. Well, they're not. They're not talking about Cylons in the terms, Sean, of having to eliminate mankind. But the point is, they're indifferent to ma- mankind. We don't. Want, we don't talk about eliminating ants, do we? We're not trying to eliminate them. 
I mean, and, and as we understand the world better, we find that they have a use or purpose. I think AI would find the same thing with humans. I, I just I think, think that, they're... Uh, you're going to be the real version of Baltar. You, <laughs> you're, right. you're, you just gonna, like this Battlestar you're gonna Galactica sell the humans, theme, don't you? are going to sell the humans out so you can Cylons. be on the side of the machines. So you'll, uh, you'll be... You, you'll... That's right, baby. I want, I want, I want, the, I want the big apartment, man. I want the Cylon. I want the Cylon hot yeah. model. You know, the, be the guy in three hundred with the hump on his back. They went over there. I want, I want, I want the Cylon. I want the Cylon. I want the Cylon blonde chick. The, yeah, Did you ever see the newer version say. in two thousand four? That you want to get the the new uh, version of uh, Star Wars uh-huh. hot blonde? Oh yeah, yeah. She's hot. <laughs> she's she's a money no, maker. I think you're right more there. like the guy with the hump, buddy. Sorry, man. Hey, love the women. You remember those? Remember the old version in the '80s with the guy with the cone head? Though that the, he was the supreme leader. Yeah, I am the supreme leader. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys well that was fun well there's gonna be a lot more about uh technology i'm sure chat gpt we'll probably talk about it many more times in the future um if we want to or not <laughs> so i think it's part of our lives and uh we just better get used to it right i'm gonna spend so, the rest of the day thinking about brent doing that humpback guy <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to think about looking up your mm. two nostrils the entire time, nice. Sean. Thanks to <laughs> the camera's clean. Place. I made sure. I, uh, I did what you suggested. You I, I put my finger in there and I smelled it. <laughs> there, there you go. That's the man. Uh, there you go. You gotta, uh, we got to do our... Um, we gotta, yeah, oh, we, yeah, yeah. We still a, have that, too. Long, okay. Man. Step up, uh, Sean. This is... I don't know if I'm ready for this. So, okay. So, I, you know, I've been going to see. I've, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm at Glenn. I'm right here. Glenn. I'm, 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 yeah. <laughs> I Sorry, wish you were man. seeing me a lot, man. Uh, I, I saw you post that uh, picture of where, uh, you going to eat with uh, Tracy at that place by the lake. And I remembered when you and I went there. Oh, yeah, good place. Yeah. We went to a different oh, nice. one. There's like eight of them here. Yeah, but yeah, you fun. and I did. Anyway, go to one. so fantastic. Uh, I've been going to see Glenn. Uh, so my get off the lawn is, um, I I went and talked to one of the nurses trying to advocate for something for Glenn, and they wouldn't they wouldn't talk to me because I wasn't a family member. And okay, well, but I understand that you can't tell me anything, but I'm telling you this. And they're like, yeah, we we'll, we can't really do anything with that because you're not a family member. Like, okay, well, I want that hospital policy of even taking information because you're not a family member to get off my bleeping lawn because that's my buddy and all of okay so we should no get rid of hippo I, I very clearly you need to I see very cl- and released all I medical information to anybody who said, asked <laughs> don't give me the information but listen to what I'm telling you hear what I'm saying they're receiving information. They're refusing to receive information. I don't think that they should give information. But if somebody comes and tells you, hey, kind of keep an eye on this, they should listen to you. And at least, and at least if, okay. at least, um, you I, know, agree with I that. mean, I could be giving them a bunch yeah. of bad information. Okay, take that information and see what it you end up with. You know, investigate it. Just check it out. All I was telling was, you know, well, I'm not going to tell you guys, but it just, it was, it wasn't a big deal. I just say, Hey, you might want to keep an eye on this. This might make him a little happier. Is it, right? So. Okay. We got you. All right. You get the, you get the bear. Okay. All right. You got it. There you go. Brent, let's hear yours. So. There was earlier this week. There was a uh, a baseball player. Um, what is his name? Uh, Anthony Bass, Toronto Blue Jays. I thought he was uh, singing. He for made the, a for comment NSYNC or something like that. Oh, that's Lance nope. Bass. <laughs> nope. He made a comment. 
Here's the reason biblically why I believe Christians have got to be boycotting Target, Bud Light, and any other corporation that's pushing the things they're pushing. I think a lot of people make this into a political issue or they say, oh, what's the big deal? The video called Target and Bud Light evil for a demonic and accuse the brands of promoting darkness and shoving it in children's faces. Now, it is true because Target had a brand of clothing that was from a, a member of the satanic cult that had images of the devil on there that were being sold to children. He made these comments and then had to apologize for the comments because he was told that it was discriminating people and it was making them feel uncomfortable coming to the ballpark. Nowhere inside mm -hmm. that comment does it mention don't come to a ballpark. He was chastised. He's been, he's been, um, there are people saying that he needs to be fired from baseball. And so my get off the lawn moment is if the 0.0001% can talk about what they want to talk about and we have to accept it and cannot question it, why cannot we make comments and not be chastised for it as being the majority and be hammered for that? And that's what I'm tired of. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Did you hear what happened to uh, the L.A. Dodgers? Yeah. And the, uh, the, cult, the satanic something cult that was invited the mothers of, of yeah <laughs> a bunch of dudes yeah that uh are cross dressers yeah they the, the the dodgers administration thought that was a good idea at a family event <laughs> fantastic at a family event yeah what the heck? what is up with all these cross dressing parties with little kids what, what's why is that all of a sudden such a big deal why why is it why why is everybody pushing that agenda lately I mean, obviously, besides the obvious reasons. We can't talk about that, Carl. You're not allowed to. So. Uh, I guess Just not. accept. Anyway, uh, we'll give you the beer on that one, Brent. I'll agree with you on that. And get off the lawn to the Toronto I Blue Jays, I should say. Hey, so hopefully you enjoyed our podcast today. And uh, we'll be back again next wow. week. This was our 20th, boys. Wow. This was Amazing. our 20th today. 2-0. Can you believe it? I didn't think it'd go past five. Wow. <laughs> hey anyway, look all i want to say about that is it's not often that guys who've grown up together get to talk to each other once a week get to discuss yeah. things once a week we have a lot of friends that we've grown up with that listen to this i just want to say i love you guys there's nothing wrong with guys saying i love you, you guys are like brothers to me you always have been i love doing this i wouldn't have it any other way and thank you guys for letting me share these moments with you guys it's fantastic right on. yeah it was fun sean i still love you even though i i, I love disagree you too with and you know what there, the, i love <laughs> that there's a lot to love <laughs>